Hey guys, Forex here. Hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is a 40 Sega Master System 2. It was sold on eBay as faulty, no picture. So let's hook this up to my TV, see what the situation is, and we'll see if we can repair this thing. So give me five minutes to set up, and I'll crack on with that. I have the system powered on, um, it's outputting through RF, it's going to my TV, I've just got to tune it in. Um, now the good thing about the Master System 2 is you don't have to have a game in the slot because there's a game built into this thing. Um, I've no idea what it is. From research it's going to be one of a number of games but the most common ones are Alex the Kid in Miracle World or Sonic 1. So what I'm going to do now is point the camera at my TV and we'll see if we can tune this thing in. Um, what I'm going to do now is try and tune this master system in. I'm just going to go to channel settings, manual tuning. As you can see, this TV can do digital and analog tuning. And new. No. And I'm just going to kick this off. There we go, it's now scanning. Um, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm not going to film the old thing scanning the old band. So, um, yeah, I'll come back if it finds anything. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be shitting me, right? There's nothing wrong with this master system. It tuned in, channel 36. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine to why the guy put this on eBay as fault, you know, picture. The only explanation I can give for that was maybe connected it to a modern day TV that was purely digital and if you do that with one of these old systems that only app for RF it's not going to work you're going to need a um, old analog system like this that can tune in old analog um, one thing off topic one thing I found out about my TV is that this thing can tune in through RF PAL Seacom NTSC and I can also change the audio as well so that means this system will tune in something like a NTSC Famicom not a problem and I get a picture color sound everything um, where if you tried that on a, a, a normal PAL TV forget it you're not doing it through um, RF you get black and white picture and you'll get no audio but this system will do it no problem so what I'm going to do now is just store this, it's program 1, no, I don't want to store it, it's program 2, okay so that's stored now so that should be there, and there you go, as you can see it's working perfectly fine, Alex the Kid in Miracle World. Um, I don't know what to do next now guys. Um, what I'm probably going to do in this video is add a power LED to this thing because uh, that's how much this system was built down to a price. Sega didn't even use a power LED to let you know when the f***ing thing's on. That's how tight they were. Um, so I'm probably going to do that in this, well I'm definitely going to do that in this video. Um, in the next video I'm going to RGB mod this thing because you can actually um, RGB mod it um, because my plan was okay repair this thing get it up and running get it working add the LED mod which is quite simple uh, and do that in one video and the next video would be you know RGB mod it um, but yeah this, this messes up my plans <laughs> So what I'm going to do next is just install the power indicator LED and then the next video will be um, RGB modding. So I'm going to crack on with the power LED mod. Yeah that's one rusty shield guys. I need to sort that out. I won't be doing it in this video though. I'll take care of that when I've finish modding this thing but yeah I need to get that LED sorted out and that's where I'm going to tap into that 5 volt regulator right there 
so I'll crack on with it. There's a number of places where you can put the power LED. Um, a lot of people just put it above the power switch, just there. Um, I actually put it inside the power switch, and I'm going to show you that. Okay, guys, here's the power switch. Now, you may be going, why am I showing you the power switch? Um, because this is where the LED is going, the power indicator and LED. I'm going to make an hole in the top of this and I'm going to shove the LED through an hole here it's going to go up in this direction and the light and the LED is going to shine out the hole here but first I need to clean this thing because it's nasty and I'm back and what I did was I took the axle and there's a groove you can see it I just cut down the groove um, and if you look carefully you can see down the actual column this part here um, and what I've done as well is I've cut an hole actually into the column and what that allows me to do is slide the LED up and so the light will come out the actual slit um, because what people normally do is they put it here but yeah I don't like doing that I like to put it in the switch it just looks more neater so what I'm going to do is get the LED inside this thing and I'll crack on with it these are the components I'm going to use standard 3 millimeter red LED and a 270 ohm resistor okay just going to take the LED and shove it through the hole and push it up so it shines out through the slit that I made and yeah I'll get on with it just thought I'd give you a little look what it looks like I'm powering it from my bench power supply and uh, yeah this is what it's going to look like once it's in the master system too as you can see I'm all wired into the voltage regulator um, if you want to know center pin is common um, right pin is output so left pin is input so as you can see the red wire goes to the output which is 5 volts and the center pin is common and you come along I have a quick connect it just allows me to separate so I can take the lid off um, under there is where the resistor is just here and it goes off to the switch which connects to the lid so I'm gonna get all this bolted back together and we'll give it a test okay we're all back together let's test this system let's power on and as you can see we've got a nice power indicator LED um, I hope you agree it looks better putting it actually in the switch than just putting it above it it looks more professional doing it this way but yeah the systems are working guys um, I have no idea what to call this video um, because my plan was to uh, an attempt to repair on this because you know it was sold as faulty not working no picture and as you can see it's working perfectly fine so um, I didn't just want to leave the video as just like oh let's test it and oh it works and then leave the video at that, that's why I did the extra bit where I made the power LED indicator switch um, but yeah so the next video I'm going to be doing is 5060Hz modding this and I'm going to be RGB modding and RGB output um, because this system as it stands at the moment only outputs RF so adding um, RGB output to this because it uses the same video encoder chip as the Mega Drive so you can RGB mod it um, and that's what's going to happen next RGB mod on 5060Hz and that will be coming up in the next video so um, yeah I hope you enjoyed this slightly strange video guys <laughs> if you liked it like, comment, subscribe, all the user stuff and I'll catch you on the next one